Welcome to official DVSA, Driving Theory Test, 2022 updated, UK. Question 1. Which is the sign for a ring road? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is C. Explanation, ring roads are designed to relieve congestion in towns and city centers. Question 2. Which sign means the end of a dual carriageway? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation, if you're overtaking, make sure you move back safely into the left-hand lane before you reach the end of the dual carriageway. Question 3. You're about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which sign would make you take special care? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Explanation, in windy weather, watch out for motorcyclists and also cyclists, as they can be blown sideways into your path. When you pass them, leave plenty of room and check their position in your mirror before pulling back in. Question 4. Which sign means there's a double bend ahead? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation, triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. They're there to give you time to prepare for the hazard, for example, by adjusting your speed. Question 5. What should you do before making a U-turn? Give one answer. A. Check road markings to see that U-turns are permitted. B. Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. C. Look over your shoulder for a final check. D. Select a higher gear than normal. The correct answer is C. Look over your shoulder for a final check. Explanation, if you have to make a U-turn, slow down and ensure that the road is clear in both directions. Make sure that the road is wide enough for you to carry out the maneuver safely. Use your mirrors and look round to check it safe before turning across the road. Question 6. Why is it dangerous to drive too close to the vehicle ahead? Give one answer. A. Your engine will overheat. B. Your mirrors will need adjusting. C. Your sat-nav will be confused. D. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. The correct answer is D. Your view of the road ahead will be restricted. Explanation, tailgating is the term used when a driver or rider follows the vehicle in front too closely. It's dangerous because it restricts your view of the road ahead and leaves no safety margin if the vehicle in front needs to slow down or stop suddenly. Tailgating is often the underlying cause of rear-end collisions or multiple pile-ups. Question 7. What should you do if you're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? Give one answer. A. Accelerate hard to get away from it. B. Brake harshly and stop well out into the road. C. Maintain your speed and course. D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. The correct answer is D. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Explanation. Pull over in a place where the ambulance can pass safely. Check that there are no bollards or obstructions in the road that will prevent it from passing. Question 8. What type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Ambulance. B. Doctor's car. C. Fire engine. D. Road gritter. The correct answer is B. Doctor's car. Explanation. A green flashing beacon on a vehicle means the driver or passenger is a doctor on an emergency call. Give way to them if it's safe to do so. B. 
Be aware that the vehicle may be traveling quickly or may stop in a hurry. Question 9. What makes the vehicle in the picture environmentally friendly? Give one answer. A. It's powered by diesel. B. It's powered by electricity. C. It's powered by gravity. D. It's powered by unleaded petrol. The correct answer is B. It's powered by electricity. Explanation, trams are powered by electricity and therefore don't emit exhaust fumes. They ease traffic congestion by offering drivers an alternative to using their car, particularly in busy cities and towns. Question 10. What should the driver of the car approaching the crossing do? Give one answer. A. Continue at the same speed. B. Drive through quickly. C. Slow down and get ready to stop. D. Sound the horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and get ready to stop. Explanation. Look well ahead to see whether any hazards are developing. This will give you more time to deal with them in the correct way. The man in the picture is clearly intending to cross the road. You should be traveling at a speed that allows you to check your mirror, slow down and stop in good time. You shouldn't have to brake harshly. Question 11. Why do motorcyclists often look round over their right shoulder just before turning right, give one answer. A. It helps them balance as they turn. B. Motorcycles don't have mirrors. C. To check for traffic in their blind area. D. To listen for traffic behind them. The correct answer is C. To check for traffic in their blind area. Explanation. When you see a motorcyclist take a glance over their shoulder, they're probably about to change direction. Recognizing a clue like this helps you to anticipate their next action. This can improve road safety for you and others. Question 12. You're approaching a mini roundabout. What should you do if a long vehicle in front signals left but positions over to the right? Give one answer. A. Follow the same course as the lorry. B. Keep well back. C. Overtake on the left. D. Sound your horn. The correct answer is B. Keep well back. Explanation. At many roundabouts, there isn't much room for a long vehicle to maneuver. It will have to swing out wide so that it can complete the turn safely. Keep well back and don't try to move up alongside. Question 13. You're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle? Give one answer. A. To get the best view of the road ahead. B. To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake. C. To leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back. D. To offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. The correct answer is A, to get the best view of the road ahead. Explanation, when following a large vehicle, keep well back. If you're too close, you won't be able to see the road ahead and the driver of the long vehicle might not be able to see you in their mirrors. Question 14. Which road users benefit from toucan crossings? Give one answer. A. Bus and lorry drivers. B. Car drivers and motorcyclists. C. Cyclists and pedestrians. D. Tram and train drivers. The correct answer is C. Cyclists and pedestrians. Explanation. Toucan crossings are similar to pelican crossings but there's no flashing amber phase. Cyclists share the crossing with pedestrians and are allowed to cycle across when the green cycle symbol is shown. Question 15. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. 
cycle in single file. B. Cycle route ahead. C. Cycles aren't allowed. D. Cyclists must dismount. The correct answer is B. Cycle route ahead. Explanation, where there's a cycle route ahead, a sign will show a bicycle in a red warning triangle. Watch out for children on bicycles and cyclists rejoining the main road. Question 16. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Entrance to tunnel. B. Hump bridge. C. Humps in the road. D. Soft verges. The correct answer is C. Humps in the road. Explanation. These humps have been put in place to slow the traffic down. They're usually found in residential areas. Slow down to an appropriate speed. Question 17. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. No through road. B. T junction. C. Telephone box ahead. D. Toilet ahead. The correct answer is A, no through road. Explanation, you won't be able to find a through route to another road. Use this road only for access. Question 18. Why does this junction have a stop sign and a stop line on the road? Give one answer. A. It's a busy junction. B. Speed on the major road is deer strict. C. The junction is on a downhill gradient. D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. The correct answer is D. Visibility along the major road is restricted. Explanation, where emerging traffic has a very restricted view of the main road, you may find a stop sign and a solid white stop line. You must stop at the line and then check carefully before you emerge. Question 19. What does this arm signal mean? Give one answer. A. The driver intends to turn left. B. The driver intends to turn right. C. The driver is slowing down. D. The driver wishes to overtake. The correct answer is A. The driver intends to turn left. Explanation. There might be an occasion where another driver uses an arm signal. This may be because the vehicle's indicators are obscured by other traffic. In order for such signals to be effective, all drivers should know their meaning. Be aware that the left turn signal might look similar to the slowing down signal. Question 20. You're approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. What should you do when a police officer gives the signal? Give one answer. A. Continue ahead only. B. Stop at the stop line. C. Turn left only. D. Turn right only. The correct answer is B. Stop at the stop line. Explanation. When a police officer or traffic warden is directing traffic, you must obey them. They'll use the arm signals shown in the highway code. Learn what these signals mean and obey them. Question 21. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? Give one answer. A. Flash the headlights. B. Select a higher gear. C. Sound the horn. D. Use the mirrors. The correct answer is D. Use the mirrors. Explanation. Before slowing down or stopping, check the mirrors to see what's happening behind you. Also assess what's ahead and make sure you give the correct signal if it will help other road users. Question 22. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? Give one answer. A. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. B. Before using the mirrors, signal, maneuver routine. C. 
when checking your gap from the vehicle in front. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer is C, when checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation, in good conditions, the two-second rule can be used to check the distance between your vehicle and the one in front. This technique works on roads carrying faster traffic. Choose a fixed object, such as a bridge, sign, or tree. When the vehicle ahead passes this object, say to yourself only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying this, you're too close. Question 23. A driver's behavior has upset you. How can you get over this incident safely? Give one answer. A. Follow them, flashing your headlights. B. Gesture to them with your hand. C. Shout abusive language. D. Stop and take a break. The correct answer is D. Stop and take a break. Explanation. If you feel yourself becoming tense or upset, stop in a safe place and take a break. Tiredness can make things worse and may cause a different reaction to upsetting situations. Question 24. What should you do if you want to overtake a long, slow-moving vehicle on a busy road? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. B. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. D. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. The correct answer is C. Keep well back so that you get a good view of the road ahead. Explanation. When you're following a long vehicle, stay well back so that you can get a better view of the road ahead. The closer you get, the less you'll be able to see of the road. Be patient and don't take a gamble. Only overtake when you're certain that you can complete the maneuver safely. Question 25. What should you do when going through a contraflow system on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. B. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce cues. C. Switch lanes to keep the traffic flowing. D. Use dipped headlights. The correct answer is A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Explanation. At roadworks, and especially where a contraflow system is operating, a speed restriction is likely to be in place. Keep to the lower speed limit and don't switch lanes get too close to the vehicle in front of you. Be aware that there will be no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Question 26. What's the reason for the hatched area along the center of this road? Give one answer. A. It marks an area to be used by overtaking motorcyclists. B. It separates the two sides of the dual carriageway. C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. D. It's a temporary marking to warn of the roadworks. The correct answer is C. It separates traffic flowing in opposite directions. Explanation. Areas of hatched markings such as these separate traffic streams that could be a danger to each other. They're often seen on bends or where the road becomes narrow. If the area is bordered by a solid white line, you mustn't enter it except in an emergency. Question 27. You're driving on a three-lane motorway. How should you overtake a slow-moving lorry in the middle lane if it's showing this sign? Give one answer. A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. B. Cautiously approach the lorry, then overtake on either side. C. Follow the lorry until you can leave the motorway. D. Use the right-hand lane and overtake the lorry normally. The correct answer is A. Approach with care and overtake on the left of the lorry. Explanation. This sign is found on slow-moving or stationary works vehicles. 
if you wish to overtake it, do so on the left, as indicated. Be aware that there might be workmen in the area. Question 28. You've stopped at a railway level crossing. What should you do if the red lights continue to flash after a train has gone by? Give one answer. A. Alert drivers behind you. B. Phone the signal operator. C. Proceed with caution. D. Wait. The correct answer is D. Wait. Explanation. You must always obey red flashing stop lights. If a train passes but the lights continue to flash, another train will be passing soon. Cross only when the lights go off and the barriers open. Question 29. You're at an incident. What could you do to help an unconscious casualty? Give one answer. A. Check that they're breathing normally. B. Move them to somewhere more comfortable. C. Splash their face with cool water. D. Take photographs of the scene. The correct answer is A, check that they're breathing normally. Explanation, if a casualty is unconscious, you need to check that they're breathing normally. Look for chest movements, look and listen for breathing, and feel for breath on your cheek. Question 30. You arrive at an incident. There's no danger from fire or further collisions and the emergency services have been called. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Give one answer. A. Check whether they have any broken bones. B. Check whether they have any bruising. C. Check whether they're bleeding. D. Check whether they're breathing normally. The correct answer is D, check whether they're breathing normally. Explanation, at the scene of an incident, always be aware of danger from further collisions or fire. The first priority when dealing with an unconscious person is to ensure they can breathe. This may involve clearing their airway if you can see an obstruction or if they're having difficulty breathing. Question 31. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Route for use by pedal cycles and pedestrians only. B. Riding of pedal cycles prohibited. C. Route for use by pedal cycles only. D. Route for use by buses, pedal cycles and taxis only. The correct answer is A. Route for use by pedal cycles and pedestrians only. Explanation, this sign marks a shared route which may only be used by pedal cycles and pedestrians. Question 32. What must you do if your ability to drive is impaired during a period of illness? Give one answer. A. See your doctor each time before you drive. B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. C. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. D. Take smaller doses of any medicines. The correct answer is B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. Explanation. Only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. Question 33. Which road users are most difficult to see when you're reversing your car? Give one answer. A. Car drivers. B. Children. C. Cyclists. D. Motorcyclists. The correct answer is B. Children. Explanation. It may not be possible to see a small child through the rear windscreen of your vehicle. Be aware of this before you reverse. If there are children about, get out and check that it's clear before reversing. Question 34. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Tram cars crossing ahead. B. 
railway level crossing ahead. C. Route for use by tram cars only. D. Level crossing without light signals. The correct answer is A. Tram cars crossing ahead. Explanation This sign warns road users of a tram car crossing hazard ahead. Question 35. You want to turn right from a junction. What should you do if your view is restricted by parked vehicles? Give one answer. A. Move out quickly, but be prepared to stop. B. Sound your horn and pull out if there's no reply. C. Stop, get out and look along the main road to check. D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. The correct answer is D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. Explanation, if you want to turn right from a junction and your view is restricted, stop. Ease forward until you can see, something might be approaching. If you don't know, don't go. Question 36. A single carriageway road has this sign. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? Give one answer. A 30 miles per hour. B 40 miles per hour. C 50 miles per hour. D 60 miles per hour. The correct answer is C, 50 miles per hour. Explanation, when you're towing a trailer, a reduced speed limit also applies on dual carriageways and motorways. These lower speed limits apply to vehicles pulling all sorts of trailers, including caravans and horse boxes. Question 37. You're driving along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tires are losing their grip on the surface? Give one answer. A. The engine noise will increase. B. The engine will stall. C. The steering will feel very heavy. D. The steering will feel very light. The correct answer is D. The steering will feel very light. Explanation. If you drive at speed in very wet conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and are floating on the surface of the water. This is known as aquaplaning. Reduce speed but don't brake until your steering returns to normal. Question 38. Which lights must you use if you're driving on a well-lit motorway at night? Give one answer. A. Use front fog lights. B. Use only your side lights. C. Use rear fog lights. D. Use your headlights. The correct answer is D. Use your headlights. Explanation. If you're driving on a motorway at night or in poor visibility, you must always use your headlights, even if the road is well lit. Other road users must be able to see you, but you should avoid causing dazzle. Question 39. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Minimum speed limit of 30 miles per hour. B. Maximum speed limit of 30 miles per hour. C. End of 30 miles per hour minimum speed limit. D. End of 30 miles per hour maximum speed limit. The correct answer is A. Minimum speed limit of 30 miles per hour. Explanation. You must drive at a speed above 30 miles per hour, as long as it is practical and safe to do so. Question 40. What's likely to happen if you use a hands-free phone while you're driving? Give one answer. A. It will divert your attention. B. It will improve your safety. C. It will increase your concentration. D. It will reduce your view. The correct answer is A. It will divert your attention. Explanation. Talking to someone while you're driving can distract you, and unlike when someone is in the car with you, the person on the other end of a mobile phone is unable to see the traffic situations you're dealing with. 
they won't stop speaking to you even if you're approaching a hazardous situation. You need to concentrate on your driving at all times. Question 41. How can you reduce the chances of your car being broken into when leaving it unattended? Give one answer. A. Park near a fire station. B. Park near a taxi rank. C. Place any valuables on the floor. D. Take all valuables with you. The correct answer is D. Take all valuables with you. Explanation. When leaving your car, take all valuables with you if you can. Otherwise, lock them out of sight. Question 42. What's the legal minimum tread depth for tires on your trailer or caravan? Give one answer. A. 1 mm. B. 1.6 mm. C. 2 mm. D. 2.6 mm. The correct answer is B. 1.6 mm. Explanation. Trailers and caravans may be left in storage over the winter months, and tires can deteriorate. It's important to check their tread depth and also their pressures and general condition. The legal tread depth of 1.6 mm applies to the central three quarters of a tire's breadth, over its entire circumference. Question 43. What do these motorway signs show? Give one answer. A. They warn of a police control ahead. B. They're countdown markers to a bridge. C. They're countdown markers to the next exit. D. They're distance markers to the next telephone. The correct answer is C. They're countdown markers to the next exit. Explanation. The exit from a motorway is indicated by countdown markers. These are positioned 90 meters, 100 yards, apart, the first being 270 meters, 300 yards, from the start of the slip road. Move into the left-hand lane well before you reach the start of the slip road. Question 44. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 miles per hour limit indicated? Give one answer. A. By double or single yellow lines. B. By hazard warning lines. C. By pedestrian islands. D. By street lighting. The correct answer is D. By street lighting. Explanation. There's a 30 miles per hour speed limit, where there are street lights, unless signs show another limit. Question 45. When mustn't you stop on a clear way, give one answer. A. At any time. B. During daylight hours. C. In the rush hour. D. When it's busy. The correct answer is A. At any time. Explanation. Clear ways are in place so that traffic can flow without the obstruction of parked vehicles. Just one parked vehicle can cause an obstruction for all other traffic. You mustn't stop where a clear way is in force, not even to pick up or set down passengers. Question 46. What are triangular signs for? Give one answer. A. To give directions. B. To give information. C. To give orders. D. To give warnings. The correct answer is D. To give warnings. Explanation. This type of sign warns you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign that you pass on the road, so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. Question 47. A person has been injured. They may be suffering from shock. What are the warning signs to look for? Give one answer. A. Flushed complexion. B. Pale gray skin. C. Slow pulse. D. Warm dry skin. 
The correct answer is B, pale gray skin. Explanation, the effects of shock may not be immediately obvious. Warning signs are rapid pulse, sweating, pale gray skin and rapid shallow breathing. Question 48. What should you do when passing sheep on a road? Give one answer. A. Briefly sound your horn. B. Go very slowly. C. Herd them to the side of the road. D. Pass quickly but quietly. The correct answer is B. Go very slowly. Explanation. Slow down and be ready to stop if you see animals in the road ahead. Animals are easily frightened by noise and vehicles passing too close to them. Stop if signaled to do so by the person in charge. Question 49. What should you do when you're unsure whether it's safe to reverse your vehicle? Give one answer. A. Get out and check. B. Rev your engine. C. Reverse slowly. D. Sound your horn. The correct answer is A, get out and check. Explanation, a small child could be hidden directly behind you, so, if you can't see all around your vehicle, get out and have a look. You could also ask someone reliable outside the vehicle to guide you. Question 50. Where's the safest place to park your vehicle at night? Give one answer. A. In a garage. B. In a quiet car park. C. Near a red route. D. On a busy road. The correct answer is A. In a garage. Explanation. If you have a garage, use it. Your vehicle is less likely to be a victim of car crime if it's in a garage. Also, in winter, the windows will be kept free from ice and snow. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.